All right, so here we go. We are at the Artist to Artist program. Welcome everybody. We're gonna try something a little bit new. This, this program is usually with songwriters and musicians, but tonight we're gonna to try it with two artists, physical artists tonight, try something a little bit different, do a little live painting, conversation, talk about our in inspiration, our muse, our creative process. So it's very exciting. We're gonna paint hidden away from everybody tonight and then we're gonna show it at the end and then put the paintings up for um, for sale at electromoon.org with the funds going to, proceeds going to the Electric Moon Foundation. So tonight, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first guest. Looks like she's gotten started over there. <laughs> Hello, Melanie Dirks, how are you? <coughs> hey, Brent. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you too. So I'm happy you're on. You are a Long Long Beach artist, is that correct? Yes, I've been in Long Beach now for about four or five years. Okay. Yeah, I moved here from West LA, and then from there it was Arkansas. Right on. <laughs> and you went to school where? Um, I went to Otis College of Art and Design twice. I got my bachelor's and my master's from there. Wow. <laughs> in what what area of art exactly um at first it was uh i was going more for graphic design okay and that kind of phased into advertising design okay and then um and so i got my degree in communication arts with an emphasis in advertising design and i worked for an ad agency for for well, I was a creative intern for a year. Yeah. And I thought like the next step, surely I'd be a creator or um, an art director, a junior yeah, art director. Yeah. Then I got laid off. Mm -hmm. So then after that, I just went into painting, teaching painting and tattooing. Great. So mm -hmm. shall we get started? So let's turn, I think you've started a little bit, but everybody, this is an empty canvas. This is, Mel and I were just talking backstage that this is the most daunting thing that an artist can see is an empty canvas and it has to you have to pull something out of the air and see what happens so shall we start Melly? i'm ready i'm gonna start like this actually let me see what i can come up with oh, okay. i'm so nervous about this because this is a very important step and i just have one canvas <laughs> um so all right so talk to me while we're while we're working talk to me about some of your um your biggest influences, whether it's fellow artists or trees outside, your dog, your friends, what you see in the world, what's what's your biggest, how do you start? Um, well, normally it's, it's, it's lifestyle because on a day to day, you're constantly seeing um, art, whether it yeah. be a mural or whether it be like a, even a new ad or even um, in fashion. So, yeah. you know, even when I check my email, you know, I, I, you know, that's even like the new way to even get out and see things is to virtually go to different art galleries. Yeah, yeah. So I'm always, you know, I'm, I'm, subs I'm, I'm subscribed to different galleries. Absorbing it all. Yeah. Right on. Is there any particular artist that you're kind of into in particular? Um, well, there's a guy, his name is Shoram Rooks, and I love, I mean, I love when people do kind of collage, when they, when they montage these different styles and these different images. Yeah. Beautifully to where color even begins to really be a part of that conversation yeah see i don't i don't know if i really look at salvador artists as i would music like i think i i'm more influenced by musicians as a songwriter is it whether it's like uh i don't know nina simone or <clears throat> hank williams or jeff buckley or radiohead oh, yeah because there's a but, style yeah they kind of inform in music i just kind of absorb from like you know, Andre 3000 or Most Def or yeah. you know, Sinatra or, you know, whoever it is, you know, Ministry or 
Nine Inch yeah. Nails or whoever exactly. and just kind of make it a big montage and then if you pull from so many different influences you kind of you have this big melting pot that mm -hmm. informs your work and because you've discovered so many different artists and you listen to you know Judy Garland to Rage Against the Machine it kind of it, it can't help but you can't help but create something new and unique I think you know yeah. so but well, it's you definitely now, get do you play inspired. music as well you know, I, I used to when I was a when I was a little girl, like my mother um, got me into piano because um, my dad had one and I don't know, I just it never really stuck with me. OK, um, but, you know, I was more into painting and when I was little and and drawing, but yeah, but I tried. I was in some piano recitals and. You know, when yeah. I was older, I got an electric guitar and I, uh oh, I, yeah, the world changed. I was getting into that, but then, you know, I, I, I stopped after the guy that I lived with pawned it for rent money. And he, oh no, that's the worst. Uh, that's terrible. Yeah. I mean, how do you think I'm not going to find that out? Oh my gosh. That's, yeah. uh, that's sad. Cause I'm the kind of guy that I never. I've never gotten rid of an instrument. I've never traded her in. I, I just can't do that because I feel like your soul becomes a part of that instrument. Yeah. Like some, some guys and girls, they'll trade in their guitar and upgrade or yeah. something like that. I've never been one to do that. So for me to lose an instrument, I've had, you know, our, our band band got broken into and I lost a guitar that way. And I think another one was stolen from the car. It's, it's always a drag because I don't like to get rid of instruments. Your soul becomes a part of them, you know? Oh yeah. So what kind of guitar was it? It was an electric guitar, a six string. Um, it was it wasn't anything fancy though, like something that I was able to afford when I was still a kid. Like I don't I don't think it should be fancy the first guitar. It should be Sears Roebuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's but the way it should be. Inspired. For sure. Um so how did you grow up? um what made you become the creative person that you are man i think that's just something um that gets kind of ingrained was ingrained in me that you know speaking of art i mean i was always drawing something and off on my own like you know on napkins or the wall kitchen table so i think i was i was put in some art classes really as a young kid and i had a lot of energy so i think that was kind of um a good area for me to go into so art has always been you know ever since i was a little kid you know it's just always a place of refuge and then rock and roll happened and then that was that was a whole you know hearing you know yeah. minor threat and bad religion and, and nirvana as a really young kid then I was, then I got into music, but I was always kind of put in choirs as a little kid too, because I think ah. I become a natural timber. Yeah. And they just, they always paired me up with the girl in the class and we always got to duets. Yeah. So, so I happy. think that's kind of how it started. And then, like I said, you know, Nirvana happened and I was like, you know what? I can feel that. I can, I'd like to do that. Yeah. So that's how it started for me. How about you? Um, well, my mom um kind of like she would always kind of have like a there's always a pad and a pad of paper around with a pen and you know while my mom was busy she was a single mom for a while and you know i'd stay with my aunt and stuff and just yeah. to entertain myself i would draw and you know kind of like and i was an only child so ah yeah being alone a lot of the time, not having any brothers or sisters to. Ah. So, yeah. You had to keep your hands busy, your mind busy, and you just kind of, there's kind of nothing else to do, which is kind of a beautiful thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. I which feel is... like that's been the only, that, that's been the main consistency. Great. And yeah. what kind of, um, what kind of music are you into? What are you, uh, do you, do you paint while you, do you listen to music while you paint typically? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell me, tell me about if you weren't doing this right now, speaking to me, 
How would you, how does Melanie get into her zone to paint? Like, what's your process? What do you dig? Oh man, it's kind of weird. Like I have to make sure certain things around me are clean. Okay. Like, I have to make sure my desk is wiped down. Okay. Um, and like I have an order of things. Interesting, and... really? <laughs> yeah. That's like, interesting. You know, when I was, a, when I went to grad school, um, the different studios, different places that the different artists had, it was interesting. It was like you were looking into people's brains. And it was like my studio was pretty organized and clean, but like, you know, some of the other students, they'd have stuff like shit yeah. everywhere. Interesting. And it's just, you know. That's interesting you bring that up because um, as an artist, I like, I like controlled chaos where it's a little bit um, disheveled yeah. with just paints and canvases around. But within the, re the last year, I've had to become, um, I know it's always been a bad word for artists, but more of a businessman with Electric Moon. Yeah. And I have to have things like super neat and orderly. Well, yeah. But, so it took my of... other side of my brain to really adjust. Yeah. Because my desk has to be like super, you know, clean and organized. But as an artist, it's it's kind of the opposite for me. Yeah. You know? Well, I feel like um, for me as an artist, you know, you can get taken advantage of so easily because so many people have the mindset that, you know, like artists are flighty. Exactly. Know, have their shit together exactly and you know like if it's your like for me i have to put food on the table you know i have a kid yep. i'm a single mom and yeah and i take my work seriously and you know people always want to try to get something for nothing and yep. you have yep. to protect yourself yeah and i think that's a lot of it that comes with um you know, I think you get getting a little bit older as artists and wanting to sustain yourself as an artist. Mm -hmm. I think when you're in your 20s, you're a little bit more, um, I was anyway, I was a little bit more reckless thinking, oh, you know, I always have tomorrow. It's fine, you know. I'm just going to, I just want to get to get me to the stage and give me a microphone. I just want to play rock and roll. But I think once you get a little bit older, you have more at stake. You have mouths to feed and, you know, children to raise and... Yeah, you know, so and, and a kinda... passion to nurture, you know? Yeah, yeah. You can't give up on yourself. Yeah, right, right. And I think, um, you know, we're, we're lucky we made it through the rough patch. I mean, some of our, our colleagues and contemporaries, unfortunately, did not, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. But I think at this point, it's just to sustain yourself as an artist, it's, it requires a little bit more uh, focus, Yeah. You know? So it just comes with it. Yeah. Who are some of your favorite bands, songwriters? Oh, I am, I'm a nineties um, kid. Oh, are you? So I, I usually have, I have a tendency to, you know. You what? I have a tendency to go to my nineties playlist. And so that includes like Nine Inch Nails and In Excess and Oh, In Excess! I love Michael. Yes, I'm, I'm a huge Michael Hutchins fan. Huge. Yes. Yeah, he was. Um, you know, sadly, I don't think he got. I think, I think he was one of the greatest frontmen in in history, like mm -hmm. in rock and roll history. I mean, I think he he exuded what it meant to be a frontman. You know. Mm -hmm. And I think I think kind of. I, I think maybe I could be wrong, but I think people forget about that. Forget about him, unfortunately. Thoughts? Well, what do you think? Um, I'm sorry. I, I just had a brain fart and I got lost into. That's all right. <laughs> this is tough to do. It's you know. Uh, well, Seems well. It's talking heads, Ramones. Ooh, that's, I guess it's um, a more eighties. Misfits. Um, misfits are older. Um, oh gosh. Well, sometimes, I mean, you know, the, the genres bounce around for me. I like to consider myself having a pretty eclectic, yeah, pretty eclectic taste. So there's a mural where I did, 
um, a bunch of RIPs. I did um, the Notorious B.I.G. and Tupac and Eazy-E. I and, saw that. Yeah, so while I was painting them, I had to listen to the music that they created. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. And it informs, you know, what how your art came out maybe, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan of, um, you typically listen to headphones, vinyl records, or just have it playing or what? Um, the way that I listen to my music? When you're painting, yeah, in particular. Oh, my headphones. Like if I'm outside, because um, a lot of the time I do pick up murals and i have to be outside yeah around you know the general public and everything and and people i mean a lot of people people have a tendency they want to ask they get curious and they want to get in conversation yeah but then there are people like we're doing. Who just flirt or whatever they just want to you know just be stupid so yeah. i put my headphones on so I don't get bothered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I can understand that. Yeah. That's kind of how I am. Like when I paint Melly, I, I prefer to be absolutely secluded Yeah. And, um, with headphones on, because I think for me, I just kind of, it feels like I just go off to a different planet and I want to get off to that different planet. And then if, if someone walks in the room and they need to talk to me and I, I take off the headphones, I instantly have to come back down to earth. It's weird. Yeah. Like it happens like that. And yeah. it's so upsetting because I just, I get off in a different world, you know? Yeah. I feel like the same way, like when I'm, when I'm working out, like when I'm going running and I have my headphones on. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. You're in your zone. You're in your motivated place. And then, and then somebody needs to ask you something and then, <laughs> You're boom, you're back to earth. You're like, oh, get me out of here. What do you need? Can I help you? Yeah, ah, can I help you? <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of what it's like. Oh. So tell us more about um, you teach teach art. Are you doing that currently? Um, I did that for a while. I'm not doing that anymore. But when um, after I got laid off, I I worked at this place in Santa Monica called Paint Lab. And it was a public art studio and I taught kids okay. um, and adults like the basic um, fields of painting and and yeah and with some of the kids I taught them port portraiture and that's always been like my favorite thing to do. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I'm not giving any hints. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering what's going on. I'm very curious. Uh, Do you ever, um, I feel like I just made a misstep on my painting here. Does that ever happen to you or just like, oh man, oh, yeah. I wish I could erase that. Yeah. Does that happen to you much or do you pretty much? Oh yeah, especially so when I get an idea, I think that's the beauty of acrylic painting is that you can go over and over with layers. Like you can just go and go and go, cover up and cover up. Yeah. <laughs> and um, cause you know, I'll even have an idea of like, should I have a hand right here? And then I'll quickly do a hand and then look at it. For like yeah. a day and then be like, no, I don't, I don't need that. And then I'll paint over it. Yeah. yeah. Or even like if, if I splatter drip on something, you know, whatever, just paint over it. I'm just maintaining and and sometimes that can be a, a happy accident too right it could work out yeah right? as bob ross would say that's right <laughs> in the words of in the words of bob ross so Did you've you got know? some ideas with what you're creating over there is that right what's oh yeah can you give us a little little hint of what's happening um so the palette is uh there's some fiery red in my Okay. Mouth. I have my 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 hands in red right now, actually. Oh yes. Um, and you did um is it Kobe Bryant that you was that one of your murals? That was fantastic. Yeah. Where did you do yeah. that? And was that after we lost Kobe? Yeah, it was um like 
a month or so after he had passed. In February, eh? Yeah. I had done a painting of him. There is a bar that wanted me to do a mural for them and they ended up flaking on me. So I still oh. have the sketch of what I was going to do. Yeah. And I, and I did a painting out of it. Um, you know, I was like, God, I can't just waste this energy. So um, a friend of mine that also taught painting, um, I guess he didn't like the offer that this one place was making and they wanted a Kobe painting. So he referred me. Okay. And their budget was really low. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it was COVID and you don't want to just sit at home. And if you're outside by yourself, you're not, you know, I wasn't worried about anything. Yeah. So I, what should have been a $10,000 job was a $2,000 job, but wow. it wasn't, I knew that it wasn't about the money. I knew that I had to do this because this was bigger, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and it's for like this neighborhood that kind of looked a little rough. And so when you have the opportunity to beautify a neighborhood, why not? Beautiful. Where is, where is it located exactly? People can go um, see it. It's it's on 52 uh 5200 Valley Boulevard. Okay. Um so that's on the other side of the 710. The other side of where? The other side of the 710, sorry. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm finding that I can't really do the abstract one that's behind me because there's a lot of this. And I can't hear you. Oh the <laughs> Yeah, so I'm missing key things. I'm like, where is it at? 52? <laughs> slash, slash. Yeah. So maybe that, that technique might be too noisy. Well, I'm also, no. I, need, I need to not speak away because when I'm at my palate, like I'll, I'll just mumble into my palate and that's yeah. not very, I, I You're doing great. <laughs> doing great. Thank you. Um, so you're, you're up at electricmoon.org and the, the, the 3D and VR, uh, Art gallery. I'm so we're so honored. Thank you. Yes, that, that place looks sweet. Like I want to be there in person. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Yeah, we um, was very grateful to have the opportunity to design a lot of that stuff. And then Mike, who helped us out from XMLA, uh, he's a super talented technological guru, and Miguel Chavez, and in um, Argentina. So we've got a pretty magical team around oh, that nice. created the whole electric moon and the whole experience. So it's uh, just honored to be able to have the opportunity, you know? How did you come up with that? Like, what were you thinking? Like, were Gosh. you on the couch one day and you were like, you know what, we need this. You know, thank you for that question. This is kind of how it happened. So I was, electric moon, we always, you know, I've always imagined, you know, um, um, you know, art space, you know, small cafe, a performance space, record shop, you know, slash cafe, that sort of thing. And right before the pandemic, I was actually looking at property to make it all happen, you know, because it was just a time in my life, like, well, I've got to do this, you know, I'm going to go look at property and see what I can figure out. So um, I started to do that. And then, you know, that January, February came around 2020. And uh, you know what happened from there? All, all hell broke loose with the pandemic. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, I don't think this is the right time now if I'm asking places, people to, to enter an establishment and everybody's being told to go home in the world, this probably wouldn't be a good time. So, you know, that happened. And, you know, I, I literally woke up in a dream and I sat up in bed and I said, you know what? Why don't I just create everything online for now? Get our name out there and create it like a regular venue art space except online and i made some phone calls and you know the people i spoke to i'm like you know somebody must have done this right do you know anything about it like no nope, never heard of it it sounds amazing i've never seen that done the next person i call nope never heard of it i've never seen that done and then you know after a few of those phone calls i'm like you know what we should do this it's going to be a huge investment still with technology and all that mm -hmm. and then um i think i called my buddy evan morton and he sent me over to Mike Austin from XMLA. And he's like, you know what? 
this sounds amazing, man. I've never seen it done before and we should definitely do it. Start sketching, call me in a couple months. And that's literally how it worked. I just started sketching each room and the gallery and the stage and the, the cafe and design, you know, the, the couches and the, the furniture and the merch room and all of that stuff. So did you and, have like a um, storyboard? Did you create a storyboard for it, for everything? Is that? Yeah, in such a way, if I had it handy, I'd show you some of my original sketches. But um, yeah, in such a way, we just, you know, went one by one each room and, um, you know, started with that. Gosh, it is hard to talk and be absorbing your work, isn't it? <laughs> but this is fun, though. This is fun. We have to take it easy on ourselves. Yeah. But yeah, so that's kind of how it started. And then I, you know, I have a passion to lift up the arts and music and art. And I figured, you know, why don't we get an art gallery where we can support artists? And why don't we get a listening room? So now we have, you know, a listening room where Craig Adams is featured and a band called Woes, um, Tawny Ellis. Uh, I join you in the art in the art room. So it was, it's a way to uplift music and art. And we have a, a coffee line, and uh, we do we do do shows like this. And yeah, does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, I mean that's great because there's so many different levels, you know, yeah. of entertainment that you know it's it's it, it keeps people engaged. Yeah, there's there's a handful of different working parts, I guess you could say. Yeah. So, and that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted some sort of eclectic, um, you know, experience. I kind of wanted it a bit, um, <clears throat> obviously not to compare myself to Tim Burton, but Tim Burton's work can oh, reach yes. young, ki young chill kids and it can reach adults because it's sophisticated enough, but playful enough and charming enough. Yeah. So that's kind of how I wanted to, Story what I wanted to bring to Electric Moon, you know? Mm -hmm. Obviously, not to compare myself to the great Tim Burton, but that's that was kind of. But the you idea. are inspired by it, and you know, yeah. when it comes to art, you know, everybody is inspired through someone, and yeah, that's where you know the argument of you know are there like, there nothing is original or whatever, but there are remixes, and I feel like combined thoughts can turn into different new things. Yeah, totally. It informs all of that. Shebang. <laughs> tell me, uh, tell me about your tattooing. How does that inform your artwork? I was thinking today, I'm like, I wonder if she's like, I wonder how that works for a tattoo artist. If they, is, is a, is a human skin, um, does it allow you to do pretty much any kind of piece of work that you want to do? Like, do you have limitations? I mean, you must have some. Well, you know, it's interesting is that it's like watercolor, you know, like it's like, it's like you can't, if you have black, you're not going to be able to go over that with like a transparent yellow or whatever. Right. You have to, you have, you have, um, you know, consideration for the layers and the order of things. Yeah. Um, but as far as like how things are similar when it comes to even like my studio art and stuff, you're still, people are still asking you to help to figure something out for them. Like, well, I have this idea and I, I want to throw in a, a, a dragon with a, with a, with a mermaid yeah. Yeah. and a cyclops. And I, and I need <laughs> this to exist in one world. Can you help me figure this out? You know, and like, yeah. And you have to use your, your creative head, your, your head. You have to help think of something. You have to help figure out what yeah. you want. Do you get a lot of people that just say, just, just make a dragon for me? Do you have a lot of people that give you specific, because I've always been really specific with my tattoos and, and worked in the process. Do you have a lot of people that just say, oh, just give me a, give me a, a serpent or give me a, a mountain scene. And then they just let you be the artist or do they come, come with you with some more specific ideas? Well, there's some people that love to say like, you know, just do your thing, just do your thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I trust you. Just do your yeah. thing. And then there are some people because it is a tattoo and they may not know me very well. You know, they, they're very particular. Yeah. What they want. Right. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, like I have some people that are like, no, I need, 
an outline of um, Saturn and a moon and an Earth and star. That's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. A star and three circles. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. but, what's your uh, What's your dream tattoo of someone walking in saying, "I want to. I want. I want David Bowie, or I want yes, uh, a portrait. I love portrait. portrait. Yes. Of like a maybe a dear family member because that's a little bit more heart heart to heart or not necessarily. Like, I have a client right now that she um, she's been. I'm going to be doing her third family member um, oh, no. next time I see her, but they're they're people that are around. They're not like um, people that have passed. They're like her her grandson and her nephew and stuff. Okay. But uh. But yeah, my boyfriend wants to get um, like a, a, a head of a tiger or a panther or something on his back. So I'm, oh, ex wow. I'm excited about that. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Nice. <laughs> Are you, you're going to do it, I presume. Oh, yeah. Great. And is that Mike then? Are you, was that Mike? Mike, yeah. Okay. Now, what does is, what is Mike do? Is he a musician or artist as well? or? Um, so I first, um, fascination began, so he, he, he used to be a pro surfer mm. and, um, when I met him, he was in construction. Okay. And so as an artist, you know, like, I'm not looking at him like, mm -hmm, how are you going to benefit me? But, you <laughs> yeah. know, like when you're. When you're interested in someone, you do want to know, like, how are they going to contribute to your lifestyle? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I was like, oh, so you build things. Okay. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> hey, you can, you can be a construction worker and be an artist. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Maybe even more so than us, just because they're, uh, it's a little bit more involved. Yeah, and they uh, have like all these tools at their hands to yep. create anything, sculpting. Yep. Gosh, how's it going over there? How you doing? I'm loving it. How are you it. feeling about what you've got going on? I am getting somewhere. You know, I get, whenever I paint, sometimes I get so excited, like I'll hug myself. Really? <laughs> Good. Yeah, like I step back. Yeah, I think you just, you just, you just you just start to get real peaceful, right? You start to get for me it just it just um not sound generic and cliche, but I just I just get real relaxed. Yeah. You know? And I I go off to space where no one can I just I just I just get absorbed. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's yeah. a beautiful that's a beautiful feeling. Yeah. And that could be I feel like, like I want to get this the motions of painting in general so when i taught it was one of those paint and sip things at this restaurant and i was supposed to be painting everyone how to do a deer you know leaping over a fence or something and anyways this guy ended up painting a, just a big penis on his really? surface. yeah and i was like all right yes just do your <laughs> thing <laughs> whatever gets you in that <laughs> whatever whatever gets you through the night right on okay nice okay <laughs> oh, so th with this wasn't a kid's class it was a little bit more of adults no yeah yeah that was an adult one or i mean yeah crazy and where was that is that down in long beach or were you back in um arkansas that was um where was that that was in cerritos that was just like a few years ago. Okay. Um, but yeah, not too far away from the tattoo shop in Artesia. Are you, are you, you're still tattooing then, right? Oh yeah. Great. Yeah. I need to, I might have to come by and get some work from you. I see you've got some stuff on your arm. I do. Yeah, I do. What inspires uh, what you choose to tattoo? How am I inspired? Yeah. Well, something that definitely means a lot to me that I don't think is ever going to change, obviously. Yeah. But um, what I've got, this one is um, the Self-Realization Fellowship. Have you heard of Paramahans Yogananda? Is that the um, flower? Yeah, the lotus. Yeah. Yes. Did you notice that or you just know it from your where? 
No, yeah, I've seen, I've, I've, I've practiced yoga. Um, and so, you know, that's in the culture and yeah. And I've tattooed that on. Have you really? A couple people. Wow. I so tomorrow, tomorrow I might be tattooing a Lotus Mandala. Oh, really beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. I have one yes. Mandala in my hand. Now, is it, is it possible? Oh, wow. Let me see. Oh, wow. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> wow. Jeez. Oh, Pete. Who did yeah. that? I did. Did your kid, I was just going to ask you if you can do it. I'm right handed. So, you know, as long as it's on the left side of my body, I can, I sure. can do it. See, I'm a lefty. It'd have to be the right side for me, but <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's fascinating. Okay. Wow. So you, you ever, that whole thing just on your own, did you have anybody assist and take over in certain areas or no? No. It's all you. Yeah. And that was around that COVID lockdown time. So the shop had closed down and I had to bring all my, all my things into the garage. And wow. you know, I was just like, Shit, I need to work. I need to do something, you know? Yeah. Yes. You just. Tattooed yourself. That's incredible. Yeah, that was right before I did that Kobe mural. But yeah, I mean, I don't like wow. tattooing myself because you have a tendency to lighten up on yourself. When someone yeah. else is tattooing you, they just get at it, you know? Sure. But what's the most recent? And are you at a particular shop right now? Yeah. you working out of? Yes, it's called Black Tie Affair. Okay. Um, and it is in Artesia. It's been there for about four, three, four years. Okay. Um, and you have a lot of regular uh, regulars that come in that you work with? No, yeah, there's a few of them. There's uh, some people just from the neighborhood that pop in too. It's in an Indian neighborhood, so it's interesting. The clientele's kind of, uh, it's, it's pretty eclectic. That's great. Yeah. You get all kinds of different work. Oh, yeah. So let's try, let's try playing a, a game that I thought of today. Um, <clears throat> so it's called, I don't know, we can call it truth or not true. So yeah. you kind of, either you can create a story and make it up or it's an actual true story. And I'm gonna kind of guess if that's actually true or you just made it up just now. You wanna try it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so come up with something, whether something that really did happen in your life that's extraordinary, weird, or interesting, or make something up and then I'll say, that's not true. Or I'll say that's true. <laughs> and we'll see if I get it right. And then I'll go, how about try it? Okay. See what you got um it doesn't have to be super elaborate it can be short it could be a uh, simple whatever so when i was 16 i uh went to boarding school in okay. uh switzerland oh my god and that's that's weird you said that go ahead <laughs> i'll tell you why in a second but go ahead carry on um so then um, it was a great experience, um, but mother said that she wanted me back home, but just not too close to home. So she had me go to another boarding school in Massachusetts. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's when I took acid for the first time. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> and then oh. what happened <laughs> and then it was a bad trip okay. and it lasted it was a trip that lasted two weeks oh had wow to be, had to be in a mental hospital oh dear um you scared me. and uh yeah that that experience um kind of had an effect on my vision, I think. On your vision? Yeah. 
Vision as in real optical vision or vision as in you as in a visionary and how you like how you want your life to go. Yeah, as in, a, as in a visionary, I think, and then just also just how you see things like, you know, when you dream and you don't you you see things like you remember your dreams and you see things, but you can't really see them too clearly. Yeah. Um. But you have an idea of what's going on, so that kind yeah. of that kind of played into okay. the practice of things. Wait, okay. so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> I don't know is that so crazy? It's crazy because I could I could sprinkle. Never mind. Never mind. Carry on. This Tell us hard, This is a hard game because I'm, I want to pause and then I feel like if you I want to make some stuff up, you want to talk <laughs> to it. It's a little half see half see. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's right in between some of that's true and some of you made up. <laughs> but I'm going to say half and half. Is that right? No, it's all true. It's all true. <laughs> it's all true. Yeah. Interesting. All right. So let me let me tell you a story about my life. I you tell me if it's true or not. I um I grew up I grew up in Switzerland. What? Yeah, and my birth records are missing. I was adopted. My birth records are missing, and um, my my family grew up um, on a farm, and we kind of um, we had a lot of sheep. So I was a very young shepherd and um, we had a, a chocolate farm in Switzerland. And um, that's where I got my love of chocolate and sheep. Ooh. And um, yeah, so as I grew up, you know, I went to school um, in Switzerland and that's how I got into like art programs and music music classes and things like that and yeah, the art um, scene in, the art scene in switzerland is very beautiful like the graph there's the graphic design the role in graphic design is just yeah i remember studying that yeah, it is it is there's a lot of there's a lot of inspiration over there for sure and they're very good uh they're very good people and they ha they're doing it right mm -hmm. so yeah, so the biggest thing was, you know, being on a, a chocolate farm and being a young shepherd. You, is this story true or false? True. It's not. I made it all up. Stop it. <laughs> I made it all up. It does sound pretty charming. <laughs> I, made, I made every ounce of it up. Well, not all of it. I was actually adopted. Oh. And uh, we'll just say my birth records are missing to create myth. Ooh. But um, yeah, everything else was made up. <laughs> but it's funny because I'm from I'm from Detroit, Michigan. So out here, people will, when I meet people are like, "Oh, you're Swedish, or you're from Scandinavia, you're uh, Swiss," and yeah. it's like, "No, I'm I'm actually from Detroit, Michigan." <laughs> uh, I figured I could get away with it with that story, and maybe maybe it became false. So that's interesting. You actually did grow up in Switzerland because yeah. that was. I mean, I was I was there for one school year. It was kind of um, I thought I was going to be sent to a convent, but that yeah. was the case. So um, you know, I was fortunate because there was a snowboard program in there, and snowboard Great. always been my favorite sport. Yeah, that's probably a big. Um, I know in Michigan big, uh, culture out there, right? Snowboarding. Oh yeah. With the Alps and stuff, yeah, I would imagine. Oh yeah, the snow is amazing. It feels like you're on clouds. Oh, it's incredible. And it's so pure, right? Because they're they're pretty they're yeah. pretty controlled with their sorry, I'm kind of being noisy over here. But I'm actually liking what's happening right now. <laughs> um oh I like this. I'm starting to I'm starting to get excited and want to hug myself. No, it's a really it's sorry. a really clean um clean country i remember even yeah. on the ski lifts and there's a ski lift that would cross the border of france and you could even see the posts that supported wow. the, the chairs in france they were dirty in switzerland they were spotless great 
And they did they did really well with COVID too, didn't they? Have really like no cases for a long time and all that, right? I think. Oh, I'm not sure. I think so. I think like Switzerland had like zero cases in Sweden. Um, oh, I heard about Sweden, yeah. And you know what else I heard about uh, is that they have female presidents. Yep, right. Well, and girls always do it better. We know that. So. Yeah. There's a thing online about like, see, you know, if a woman, yada, 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 then run, 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 run. So, yeah. 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 So they're doing, they're doing it right out there. That's for sure. I think. But anyway, so yeah, I made that up. I made it, oh, I made much, of it much of it up. <laughs> I was trying to make it sound like I was making some stuff up. Because if you no. say it too fluidly, then you're giving it away. That's true. I try to try to like act a little bit, but maybe I act too much. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, this is a lot of fun. Are you having a good time over there? I am. I am. I can't. I'm wait. getting. I'm like torn on what colors to use, which is is taking my time up. It's six forty eight already. How are you doing over there? Wow. Um, I've got a lot. I've got the majority of the canvas covered. There's some great. Yeah, yeah. I gotta get moving here, Melanie, because I want to. <laughs> I want to get this into to a point where people are gonna want this. We can raise money for the foundation. So yeah, so Electric Moon Foundation. I'm not sure if you're aware, but we're gonna be doing some beautiful things, and I'm very excited about. Um, for instance, like music and art. To me, for us to be able to do this, it's so therapeutic. And if I didn't have something like this to do. I'd be in a lot of trouble, you know, yeah. so I think with the foundation, we want to, you know, reach other kids so that they can find their own way through music and art and have a chance, right? Same here, you yeah. know. So we're pretty, and pretty excited about that. I feel like art has always kind of um, made itself to be a pillow that you could cry in. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, we we're very we're very grateful to have this release, and a lot of there's kids out there that you know there's a kid you know sitting on his bed in Detroit right now with some headphones on that doesn't have access to a trumpet or a saxophone, and he could be the next Miles Davis. So what we're gonna do is get that saxophone and that trumpet to him so that he has a chance. Um, so that's a big part of our mission. We've got a um, a summer camp happening at Alexandria House this summer for the kids. So it's pretty, pretty exciting stuff. Oh, nice. You know? And that's in Michigan? No, that's right out here in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. Yeah, Alexandria House is doing some amazing stuff. They, they work with young women and their children. Um, and it's, it's a shelter. So they kind of bring them in and get them rehabilitated to find their own work. Oh, um, to find their own housing and they actually just purchased the um <clears throat> the apartment building next door to them for for a lot of these women to get a head start you know right next door to uh where they've um you know worked with alexandria house so that's pretty exciting stuff um, yeah so we're i'm going to be visiting with some friends on uh tuesday to cook dinner for everybody over there <laughs> that's a beautiful thing that's a yeah, good if you want to get involved, just uh, DM me. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just let me know if you want to join in. You'd be more than welcome, you and Mike, to join us. But uh, the more the merrier. Yeah. But anyway, so what's uh, are you working on a huge art project right now at all? What are you What are you up to? Is there anything in well, particular there's... that's on your plate? Yeah, there's a show that's coming up um, in downtown LA at the Hive Gallery. And... They're having their 17 year anniversary. And for, you know, like this, for, I mean, that's a big deal for a lot of businesses because these days it's- How many years? 17 years. Wow, that's a huge deal, man. Because yeah, it's hard to stay afloat for a lot of people. And yeah, so I've known uh, Nathan for a while now since I pretty much moved here. <laughs> okay. Nathan, the owner? Yes. Um, Nathan, oh my God, I'm blanking on his last name. But he's the King Bee at the Hive. Okay. 
I think I've performed there, maybe. I think I've... They have a stage over there? Yeah. Yeah, I think I... Really early on, I think I did a little show there. It's a really groovy place. Is it an art gallery as well? Yes. Okay, yeah. That's yeah, like, um... He has studios for other artists to work there. So you've got, um, are you going to show some, some art then? Is that what's going yeah, on? I am. Great. I am. This is, um, so I, ha I haven't been able to start a, a new painting for a while because I've been busy working on walls, but yeah. this one I'm excited about because I actually kind of started it months ago and so i'm finally like this is encouraging me to jump back on it and finish it yeah great great so yeah it's it's gonna be titled wild thing when is that i'd love to attend tell everybody when when we can maybe head out there um it's in april it's gonna be in april i want to say april 17th um the 17th i think i got a show that night is it the 17th let me see. Let me double check. And or I might be my I'm going to see the Killers that night, maybe even. Ooh. Uh, are you a Killers fan? Um. Well, I I remember listening to them a lot when I was an undergrad at Otis when they first came out. Yeah, they're still um, they're still very very vital. They're doing the stadium tour and, but uh, yeah. Yeah, when is that date? I want to I want to see your show. That, that sounds really great. Let me see. Um, I've got the email open. What colors do I want? Where? April 9th, 8 to April, 11. Nah, I think I've got it. That's a Saturday, isn't it? That it probably. Let me see. Yeah, because the seventh, eighth, ninth. Yeah, shoot. What uh, what time does it all go down for folks? Like eight to eleven. 8 to 11, okay. Mm -hmm. At the, the hide or the hive? The, the hive? hive? Like a, like a, like a honeybee hive. I love that name too. <laughs> the hive. Yeah. Great. Worker bees. Cool, very cool. How's your painting coming along? You know, I'm, I'm starting to feel a little bit more. I'm, I'm being a little bit, I'm being a little bit uh, sensitive on myself right now, but I think, uh, I think if a little more due diligence, Melanie, I think I'll get it. <laughs> I think I'll get it. I'm trying to get everything covered and then just kind of um, add a little bit more of a wild touch to it, I think is where I'm trying to get to. Yeah. But are you having a good time? Are you good with time and everything over there? Everything's all right? Yeah. I keep looking at the uh, dog, making sure. But what kind of dog do you have you got over there? You guys have a dog over there, I think you said? Yeah, he's a miniature pincher. Um, a miniature what? A miniature pincher. Oh, pincher. Okay. Doberman? Uh, yeah, like a mini Dobie. You know, they're actually not related. Okay. I did not know that. <laughs> I About didn't the pincher either. family, like the terrier family? Um, no? Well, he's a, they're considered the king of toys. Um, the king of what? King of toys. Huh. Toy dogs. Interesting. So it's a little, it's a little guy? Yeah. I feel sad. Okay. Okay. You know, I got him because I saw Madonna had one and I was going through a phase when I was younger. Oh yeah? <laughs> I can't mess with Madonna, man. <laughs> oh no. But yeah, this is noisy <laughs> technique, Melly. I'm sorry, folks. Oh, yeah. Noisy. Hope everybody's doing all right out there. You're enjoying the uh, the show tonight. This is uh, the very first time we've done a live painting. And I'm really into this um, this whole format, this whole concept. We'll be doing, um, we're celebrating the music of Radiohead uh, for the Sunday Night Review at Hotel Cafe on March 27th. And you know what's really exciting, Melanie? Hmm. Are you a Radiohead fan? I am. Well, all of their album art uh, was created by the same artist, Stan Dan Dan Dogwood, and he did all of the classic Radiohead, all the album covers, right? 
So I don't know if you can picture in your head the album cover for Kid A or OK Computer. Yeah. Yeah, well, he did all that artwork. So what we're going to do, we're going to have our friend Esther Bent, who's become a very a new friend um, of ours. She's going to paint live the album cover to Kid A. Ooh. Was on it a huge like canvas. A, was it, was like, that a, I remember what, that being like a graphic design piece, was it not? What is it? The OK Computer. The OK Computer one is, yes. But the Kid A is a painting. Oh, like, okay. I don't know if you can picture it, but remember to look it up tonight. And she's going to, well, I think we're going to go with a OK Computer. We haven't, to, or Kid A, I'm sorry, Kid A. Pardon mm -hmm. me. Um, Kid A, because I think it's the most interesting and it's the most achievable to do within like a couple hours. Mm -hmm. But I'm so excited about it because I love that album cover. Yeah. So she's going to paint it live on this big, huge canvas, and then we're going to auction it off at the end of the night. Oh, nice. So, I always really love um, Paranoid Android. You like that one? Yeah, that's a good one. That song is like our generation's like Bohemian Rhapsody, if I could be bold enough oh, to say that. I love but I think OK Computer, correct me if I'm wrong, but OK Computer, I find to be our generation's Dark Side of the Moon. Huh. Another bold statement. <laughs> another very bold statement i'm sure pink floyd purists would be like are you kidding me but yeah. i tell you what man okay computer is a just a gorgeous beautiful masterpiece do you know the record well um well the paranoid android song when you said like the bohemian rhapsody it definitely is because it has so many layers and it goes on it's like theatrical yeah yeah uh, exactly so beautiful so that yeah, it is there's a lot of different elements to it and there's a lot of there's a the really big rocky part that's that just gorgeous choir bit with the string i mean it's just uh it's just masterful melanie if you ask me and i think there's few records i think uh another one in that world is is beck's um sea change do you know that record um not i'm i'm having trouble remembering it's it's his big breakup record so it's a bunch of really sad and atmospheric folky kind of um it's kind of like folk songs with like the flaming lips backdrop with a lot oh, yeah. of trippy, trippy folk, sound it's gorgeous he's a folky kind of guy beck beck yeah he can be he started out as like a folk singer Obviously, he got wacky with two turntables and a microphone and all that <laughs> stuff. But at, at his core, yeah, he's a harmonica with acoustic guitar. Yeah. Which I don't think most people know that because Sea Change kind of um, fell off. Didn't really do that well, but now it's like hailed as a masterpiece. Usually how it works anyway. But um, yeah, so I don't think a lot of people think of him that way. But yeah, he is. Yeah. What's some of your most influential records? Is there some that you just go to on a really terrible day that that can just pick Molly up a little bit if need be. Oh man, um, so I have my mood. Sometimes I have to listen to like metal and Great. Yeah. sometimes I have to listen to, you know, some industrial darkness from Nine Inch Nails or something. Or um, ministry, stuff like that. Yeah, Eraser. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, oh, and then um, you know, Tool is in there. Great. Yeah. Um, counting bodies on the floor like sheep. That song, it's a good one. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, I was influenced by Southern lifestyle, and so sometimes you know, I get in the mood for a little country. Hey, I love the old stuff. I'm not. I'm not so much into the homogenized pop right. country of today but um hank williams patsy klein is one of my favorite voices easy mm -hmm. i love patsy klein so willie nelson of course johnny cash lefty frizzell mm -hmm. all those people yeah i love that stuff for sure yeah is that the kind of country you're talking what kind of country are you talking <laughs> oh hank williams is good i grew up with garth brooks did you yeah I, I admire the guy i respect him i'm not particularly but 
Yeah, you know? for me, it's just sheer nostalgia. Okay. Um, but you know, my some of my family members were telling me that I'm Dirks Bentley is like my fourth cousin or something. So that's a talented dude, though. That guy's that guy's a really talented cat. Yeah. <laughs> and I also like I think who else is also really good in the the whole world of newer country is um. What's our cat's name? Uh, he's married to the actress um, Keith Urban. Oh, he's a yeah. talented guy. Yes, yes. There's yes. another cat. What's that other cat's name? I met him at a guitar center. Um, what is that dude's name? Oh, I don't know. Has but... he been on TV? Or has he yeah, been but on give me that? Johnny Cash and Patsy Klein and Willie. Uh, Willie. Willie's one of my favorites oh, as a songwriter. Willie. Yes. I mean those songs, Melanie, they're just like what a what a what a gift he is to us. Mm -hmm. I think. I saw Willie with Dylan. Oh, nice. Mike's favorite artist is Dylan. Oh man. I love I love I love Bob Dylan's work very much. Yeah. This is starting to take shape over here. I'm starting to get kind of excited. See, all you have to do is keep on keeping on. Yeah, you got to keep at it, Melanie. <laughs> keep at it. I would love to, like, before I put this up for auction, I'd love to, like, just finish it, but I don't think that would be right. It should be just stuck in this moment. And, you know what I mean, right? I shouldn't, I shouldn't mess with it. We should put our brushes down and be done, right? Don't you think? Are we, are we calling it at 8 or at 8.30? <laughs> Can we go to 8.30? Are you cool with that? Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. Let's get wild. Yeah, because I have. Because I really want to finish this. I'm, I'm like, too. my heart is like. Me too. <laughs> my heart's in this now, man. My heart is really in this. I have to pull yeah. this off. And it's getting there, I think. Yeah, and it's so easy to be like, mm, okay, I'm going to take a break. But sometimes, you know, the painting needs you. Sometimes you have to be in the moment. Yeah, and we need it. We need yeah. it, yeah. you know, like I can easily during stay at home orders, Melanie, I was, I was basically building electric moon and doing the sketches and I was writing for my band at the time, our band. And, um, I would just get up every day and just either, you know, build electric moon, do the sketches or write music or paint. And I would just paint through the night easy. Like yeah. with a glass of bottle of wine and I could just some music and I could just easily paint through the night. Are you one to um, do you reach limits where you've had enough or could you just easily just keep going? You know, there are times when I can't sleep and, you know, instead of just looking at the back of your eyelids for three hours and trying to fall asleep, like just work, just get something done. So yeah, great. Yeah, sometimes I'll just go and work on something that I've got going on. Yeah, I, I love it. I, and I, I, I have so many responsibilities right now. I'm not able to do it as much, but I can easily just, just, and I just, you know, we just paint through the night and get up at 11 o'clock at noon. I had nowhere to be, you yeah. know, I could get up at any time. And so it's a beautiful, um, you know, it was a beautiful uh, period for art. You know, sadly, we obviously lost a lot of people, but uh, mm -hmm. for art, I think we were able as artists, you know, it was, uh, we were able to, you know, kind of express what was going on inside ourselves and in the world. And I think it created, it gave us a lot of art out of the whole, out of the whole period. And we're still not through it all yet, but I oh, think yeah. I, mean, I was, we got Fiona Apple's new record, which is amazing. We got a lot of music. Oh, I, I used to love when I was in the ninth grade, Fiona Apple was my shit. Have you heard her new one, Fetch the Bolt Cutters? Um, no, I haven't. I haven't. Oh, you're missing out. Well, it's so I'm... wildly fantastic. Ugh. I painted to it like all during quarantine. Okay, well, I need to, I need to look it up. I need to just... It's, you know what? It's not the polished Fiona you made. It's wild. It's, it's, it's out there, but I love it. Well, but it's not Shadow Boxer. <laughs> oh, yes. 
Shadow it's it's not it's a little bit it's 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 wacky and wild. I call it wildly fantastic. You got some homework to do. You got to check out Sea Change. <laughs> and you have to check out Fetch the Bolt Cutters. And then um, call me in the morning. Well, I'm grateful. You're all fixed up. I'm always grateful to be in, to be informed with you know new. Um... What what should I listen to? What's give me give me a list. Well, you know, my my playlist usually bounces around like with, um, you know, Machine Gun Kelly is in there, Black Bear, uh, Kid Rock. Kid Rock's, I think, playing right now. Yeah. He's a very talented cat, that guy. He's a yeah. Detroiter. Yeah. He's a Detroiter. Yeah. <laughs> he's very, very Detroit, that cat. But yeah. yeah, he's he's one of those guys, man. I tell you what, when I lived on the campus of Michigan State, and um, he was he just he worked really hard. And he and his success came grassroots, and then he made it big with that big whatever song it was. Oh, but he really worked hard um, early on um, because he would come to campus and people were like Kid Rock, Kid Rock, Kid Rock, and there's this huge buzz of this dude from Detroit. Yeah. And you just pack the places like back when it was just straight up grassroots and you had to tour, you know, and he was a really hard working guy. Yeah. Yeah. You have to Wait, is he in town that. right now? He's playing. Um, no, it's just on my Pandora. Oh. I've, got, I've got a little bit of tunage in the background. Great. I can't hear it. <laughs> good. So you can hear me good. <laughs> yeah, I can. I kind of need. Yeah, I'm really getting into this right now. How about we go till 10? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm joking. I could. I could easily. I'm starting to get, I'm starting to find my groove now, actually, which is nice. Yeah, that usually happens once you start just getting comfortable with your pace. Yeah. And so what, uh, what questions might you have for me? What do you got? Toss them at me. Um, so how did you grow up? What got you into, um, Music and art? Yeah. Sorry. Well, <laughs> a lot of different things. I think it's, I think it's just kind of, um, I think it's just kind of ingrained in me, Melanie. I think it's just, uh, Oh wait, when did you move to LA? 2007, the summer of 2007. How about you? When did you move out here? In 2004. Okay. You beat me to it. <laughs> so I lived, I, I first lived in the Palisades and then I moved to Topanga, which is really magical. I loved it up there. Topanga is beautiful. Wrote, I, I usually like to go hiking around that. Yeah. Trip. Yeah. So I wrote a couple of records up there and then I moved to, let's see, Hollywood. And then I moved to North Hollywood and then I'm, I'm now here. So have you been always in the similar area? No, I've Full jumped time? around. I've jumped around to a couple neighborhoods. Um, I used to live in yeah. Culver City. Okay. Um, and the LAX area, you can always hear the planes coming and going. Um, oh, that's lovely. And then West LA. But it just got so expensive in that area. So yeah. Crazy. Long, Beach, Long Beach is way more affordable for me. Yeah, I dated a girl who lived in, in Venice, like literally like a hundred feet from the ocean, less than that. And Ooh. her apartment was like tiny. And yeah. when we first started dating, I'm like, you know, maybe we should just hang out at your place. Cause my place is really small. I lived in this guest house. I loved it, but it was like tiny and I'm like, maybe we should hang out at your place. It's like, no, my place is smaller. And I'm like, oh, no, that's not possible. It's really not possible, Catherine. And sure enough, it was like her bed, a little kitchenette, and a bathroom. And that was it. And I was like, wow, this is smaller. That sounds about right. And what was her rent? Oh, my God. It was like 1600 Oh, my God. And this would have been, what, 2012? Still. 2013. That's insane. Still, that's a lot of money. 
I couldn't I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my god, you pay sixteen hundred bucks. But it was quite nice to be able to be you know, midnight or two in the morning and go walk to the ocean in Venice. It was like magical. Yeah. You know, being a kid from Detroit, you know, a new kid still from Detroit, I was like, This is incredible. I can go like walk to the ocean right now. This yeah. is really something special. I just didn't so that's when I got into surfing and that kind Are you of thing. Surfing? But, uh, yeah, not not nearly as good as Mike, I'm sure. That's for sure. <laughs> I love to just paddle out and see the ocean, um, the dolphin go by, and I know I was I was a total poser. Let's just put it that way. I'd like get out of the ocean. These dudes would be like, "Dude, how are the waves, man?" And I had super long hair at the time. I had a cool board that I'd gotten, and I looked like <laughs> such a poser. And they'd be like, "How are the waves, man?" I'm like, "Dude, I'm just starting out. I don't really know, man." They're <laughs> You know, but I looked like I looked like I knew what I was doing, like I was some kid from, you know, Malibu doing it forever, but With not the case. Long locks. Did you have long blonde hair? A super long, like Robert Plant. <laughs> not quite as kinky and curly, but it was probably down to like here. Yeah. Super long. But I loved it, but um. Yeah. I Mike had like a, uh, Mike had big long dreadlocks when he really. Was now, when you get rid of those, did he have to uh, just cut them out? I've heard that once you're done with them, you got to shave your head. Is that right? Is that right? Yeah, because it's all matted up and stuff. Yeah, yeah, you're supposed to. You're supposed to. And if you do them right, um, it's basically destroying your hair, right? That's a, that's what happens, right? Yeah, it was bad. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I had to tease. Mike, it. will you tell us about the dreadlock process? You can jump in here. <laughs> uh, tell us what it, what it took to create those dreadlocks the concoction you would was it egg and i don't know what how'd you do it um uh, what did i do i did beeswax and beeswax that's right yeah and then uh i think the girl that did it was teasing it with like a flea comb for a cat super tight yeah. comb back teasing it and rubbing it in for like two days it took probably and then, and then uh, it just has to kind of just set. I know beeswax was like a super important element, right? Yeah, for sure. And then that, the ocean actually helped because the salt water sucked them up. Matted it. Yeah. So yeah. It, it went quick, but my hair was to my waist. And when I dreaded it, it was like shoulder length. And then I went another eight years growing them out. They were pretty wild. Wow. Yeah, but, I remember there was a, <laughs> back in the day, there was like a, a real, um, Gosh, what a, you know, not, not exactly the bad brains dreads, dreads, but there was like a product that you could buy and <laughs> I would do it. And it was like a, I don't know, a bed head or something like that. Oh yeah. Like, oh, I remember yeah, that. Yeah. 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 Have you heard of that, Mike, that stuff? Yeah, definitely. But it probably works though, right? <laughs> I remember bed head also. No, that was manic panic that I had for color. Yeah. But, what are some uh, fun colors you've done to your hair? Man, um, I'll tell you a quick story. I did red once by accident. We were on stage and I had long blonde hair and we we're on stage. It was our new guitar player's first show. And um, I had an Iggy Pop moment, speaking of Detroit, uh -huh. um, where he was to my left or to my right. I think he was to my left. And I was just doing my thing singing and I went like this. Bam, right into the headstock oh. of his guitar. <laughs> and so my it just cut my head open, my forehead, oh, and I was just no. bleeding. So I had kind of pink hair for like a couple days from the blood, actually. Oh my and, god. Uh, yeah, we continued the show. And oh, wow. later on, my buddy was like, dude, you're like so Iggy Pop, man. You kept playing. What the f you know? Like, how could you do that? You just bet you're bleeding. Of course, I toweled it and we continued the show. But and then my girlfriend at the time, um, I remember going to bed, you know, super late that night. And uh, she didn't want me to fall asleep because could, like a fear of concussion. Oh, right. Yeah. And I remember back then we had a lot of I think it was like a, a can of beer and I just kind of kept it on my head and it like stayed on my headboard for the duration of when I stayed in that apartment. But uh, so yeah, I had pink hair then um, from the blood, natural blood, I guess, but it, it wouldn't wash out. Isn't that amazing? 
What? Like it, it stayed like bleach blonde run. hair. What's you that? Have, you must have had like bleach blonde hair. Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty blonde, so it took a little while to wash out. How about you? Um. So my hair is naturally like a brown, but I have gone through pink and purple and yeah. um, like a turquoise, changed to a green. Um, I've, and I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. My hair is, Why? Way, too, my hair is way too thin to be doing that. Like my uh, hair. Does it, does it damage it then or like you, it's, it's like oh yeah reversible? I have I have super fine hair like even you can see how it moves it's like feathery uh, that looks pretty thick to me though that looks thick <laughs> but then like if, if you put bleach in this hair you're just gonna burn it right off uh, yeah so, see when my hair grows long it gets it's really it's pretty full it's pretty full but I don't know if I'll ever unless I was playing a role for something I don't think I'll ever have do my hair like that anymore i don't know i think it was just a time it was just, i did it been there done that kind of thing yeah it had its moment <laughs> yeah it did and it needs to stay in that moment but if i had to play like michael hutchins or something like that i would definitely grow it out again but yeah but okay. yeah he was he was he was amazing that cat have you ever had it super uh super short Oh, yeah. So this is kind of silly. But when I was pregnant, I thought that your hair grew out faster. So I had, I bleached my hair and put it through so much hell that um, I was like, well, fuck it, I'm just gonna cut it all off. And I ended up getting like a pixie haircut. And um. I remember I didn't I wasn't really into it. I remember thinking I was a boy. I'm like, yeah. God, I'm pregnant. I'm just a strange boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's your what's your boy's name? Ryder. Fire? Ryder. Oh, Ryder. I think you said fire. I'm like, that's interesting. That's a cool name too. <laughs> that would be. Oh man, I'm I'm I'd love to meet a kid here. named Fire. Are you kidding? Like you know what I like huh. for, uh, for a name that I don't think has been done before huh. in relation to that nature. Oh, I have heard Newford. that. It's got a little ring to it too. What is it? Nature and what? It would be nature newfer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That is pretty cute. I don't think nature's ever been done. I think it would be a new thing. I definitely have not heard it before. But you know, I think we got 10 minutes. I think we got 10 minutes. I could easily go all night on this, but uh, how are you doing over there? 10 minute warning. Good, I think 10 minutes is good. I just need all right. 10. Do you have anything you want to share with the, with the good people that have tuned in tonight? Is there anything further that you want to make sure that you, uh, you want to say or anything? Anything like um, that? Other than other than uh, Good to be stay, here. Straight, stay real, stay beautiful. Yeah, right on. Um, well, just keep on keeping on. Go see your work in the in the art room at Electric Moon, maybe. Yeah. Oh yes. Also, there's this uh, documentary that I'm going to be in. And oh, wonderful! It's, it's called Sincerely Los Angeles. I'm actually wearing a shirt from that the director gave me. But um, so that's actually about the phenomenon of all the Kobe murals that came up around LA after Kobe died. And Say that again, the, all the what? All the Kobe murals, the Kobe Bryant oh, okay. murals that came about yeah. around town. Because right after yeah. he passed away, I mean, within such a short period of time, before you know it, there's 250 murals in LA. Yeah, yeah, that was, there was a lot of uh, people honoring the great Kobe. Rightfully so. He was pretty magnificent. I think he really, um, I think he really grew into a really lovely human being um, towards the end there. I think he was really, if you see some of those interviews mentally, he yeah. was really, um, really, really uh, 
I think he really evolved into a really lovely human being. Have you have you seen any of those interviews? Oh yeah, the um, really. I saw some snippets from this documentary, and he shares some moments that Kobe had in some of his interviews. And I wasn't aware of really how prolific he was, and because he was a yeah. piano player as well. Yes, yeah. For his wife, he learned a bit of uh, Beethoven for her yeah. birthday or something. Such a beautiful thing. That's astounding. And one of the one of the most enduring stories that I heard about Kobe is, um, you know, he was in his life towards the end, he was really looking to, you know, he was coaching his daughter's basketball team, and he was interested in inspiring kids. And it's kind of a, a parallel story, but he, um, his last act in the helicopter was trying to get in touch with someone at a school to help another kid get, to help another kid out like that was uh -huh. his last act like he sent a text in the helicopter saying hey you know i'd like i know this kid or blah 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 can you introduce them to the coach i'm trying to trying to lift her up a little bit can you uh, make that he's happen trying to help me? someone what's that he's trying to help someone yeah, exactly. That was his last act. And um, it's just kind of a testament of like, the kind of person that he was really developing into. And obviously a wonderful father. And um, but anyway, Kobe Bryant. Yeah, miss you, buddy. <laughs> he was not my I wasn't friends with him. But <laughs> he's still a buddy. He's a buddy to the world, right? Right. He's somebody definitely an icon. Somebody yeah. that Somebody that will definitely be hard to forget. I don't think could ever be forgotten. Golly, I'm about to put on the final touches. How you doing over there? Me too. Right on. We're, we're pulling this. Are we pulling this off? I think we are. Ah, yes, we are. I think we are. This is terribly exciting. Is Mike still hanging around there? Is he there? Um, uh, Mike, I think is upstairs somewhere. Where'd you go? I think we're going to pull this off, man. Really? I would love to continue working on this tonight, but I don't think that would be fair. Uh -huh. be, I think it should just be stuck in this moment and it is what it is, right? I think. Uh, yes. I have a few more bits of white to put in here. Just so everybody knows, these this whole show, if you ever like to review it or share it with a friend, it will be up at the Electric Moon podcast in probably a couple days as soon as it's edited. In addition to, if anybody's interested, we're gonna turn around these pieces of work that we've created within an hour or so, and they will be both for sale with the proceeds going to the Electric Moon Foundation. And if you're just tuning in, the Electric Moon Foundation is a newly founded organization that is passionate, and driven to deliver music and art to young people um, that may not have otherwise had access to it. So it's gonna help pay for musical instruments, music lessons, art classes, and all sorts of beautiful things. We've got a lot of things planned um, coming up and you can learn more about that at electricmoon.org. So Melly, thank you for your generous um, donation with your painting tonight. Thank you for, for doing that. Yes, my pleasure. Is Mike assisting over there? Hey, I don't have assistance. He <laughs> is. He's helping me with some. That's all right. It's all good. Our water got all muddy. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I I brought out another cup because I'm like I'm not gonna want to get up and have to go change this cup. So I better I have a couple cups that. of water here. Okay. You getting there? Thanks. I don't want to stop, but I feel like. What time is it? 826. Thank you everybody for tuning in tonight. It's difficult to see who is actually tuning in, who's not, what you're doing. But we thank you so much for being here. We'll see you guys next month. Maybe we'll do this again. Maybe we'll do this with Esther Bent and we'll do another live painting because I'm really, really loving this kind of thing right now. Oh yeah. So you guys see you guys at the Sunday Night Review, March 27th, as we honor Radiohead uh, with live painting as well. What else you want to talk about, Melanie? What else you got? Tell 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 the kids more about your um 
the showing at the hive one more time what night what time where yeah, that's going to be april 9th um from 8 to 11 um and the hive is it's kind of like a salon style gallery there's a lot of work to see a lot of different rooms um okay. it's a fun experience there's usually like some theatrical performances. Oh man. A lot of things to entertain people. I think I've got a, a gig that night, but I, if I could be there, I'm going to be for yeah. sure. I'm getting there here. Now the white's always kind of exciting because that's when your little highlights and stuff start coming in. What's that? White, setting in white paint. Ah, uh, I don't use a whole lot of white. Yeah, oh. I don't use a whole lot of. Thank you, Mike XMLA, for uh, helping out tonight, making sure everything is smooth and up on the big screen on electricmoon.org. Thank you, Mike. Did you hear that? Yeah. That was my disco ball ornament. Oh, I have a disco ball in my bedroom. <laughs> you know what? They're really magical, aren't they? I love them. How could you not yeah, love they, a disco ball? They really are. Gosh. All right. What I'm hustling doing? now to pull this off. I'm hoping I don't make any silly steps. <laughs> How could you, right? All right, <laughs> man. This is getting there. How are you feeling? Pretty good. I can't wait to see what you've traded over there, Melanie. I can't wait to show you. <laughs> Almost there. What time is it? Who's got the time? Who's got the clock? It is 8.28. Oh my gosh, two minutes? Are you serious right now? No, it's not fair. I don't want to put this down. Uh, I want to keep going. All right, so we got two minutes, everybody. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next month. And thank you, Melanie Dirks, for being here tonight. It's such an honor. And I'm a huge fan of your work and you as a person. So thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for having me. It was, uh, I'm real uh, honored to be here. I love putting things towards a good cause. And um, yeah, this is fun. You're a superstar, Melanie. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, okay, I need to call it because I could keep going and going. And going. All right, let's let's call it. I'm gonna I'm gonna let's do it. Let's uh okay. let me see if I can just add some wild stuff. Here. <laughs> let me Without just put a little too... bit of salt in And remember, guys, this was created within an hour and a half in a special moment in time between Melanie and Brent and uh, it's going to go towards a beautiful thing. If anybody would like to snag these up, it will help continue the arts on forever. And uh, that's that. All right. Shall we reveal? Are you done? What do you think? I don't yeah, want to stop. I'm, I'm going to put my signature on there. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do that too. Thank you. Yeah. We'll do Bye. that right now. <laughs> All right. And then we put them down, right? And that's yeah. it. So I'm going to add this here. No signature. Turned out pretty well. All right. That's it. What do you think, Mel? You want to reveal first? You want to go? What's... All right. Whew. What we got. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. That's magnificent. Holy cow. Wow, that is, uh, look at that. It's very painterly for an hour, I'll tell you that. Oh, you can see my <laughs> tattoo there. Is that Prince? Bowie! Oh, Prince, Prince and, and Bowie, Bowie. wow. Yeah. That is magnificent. Thanks. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> that That's beautiful, that's Bowie. Wow. I'm happy with this. And not only that, it's a huge honor that you're donating that to, uh, the Electric Moon Foundation. That's thank you, Melanie. That's uh, I'm speechless. 
and I'm a writer. <laughs> well, thank you so much. That's beautiful. You're very welcome. All right, my my work is a little bit more abstract, but uh, that's what we've come up with over here. Oh, look at those colors. Yeah, so it's a little uh, a little bit different than your work, but artwork oh. all the same. But uh, yeah, it's yeah. very dynamic. The big reveal. Yeah, so normally I would go a little bit more in depth. If you can see, it's not quite. And then you have this one's a little bit more in depth with pen, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. But uh, did you use um, like ink with a brush or ink with a pen? This this one tonight. Uh huh. Yeah, this is all watercolors with a with a brush. Yeah. So if you look close, because we didn't really have time to go through it with pen, so I tried to make it work with the brush. You know, it's crazy. Some right. of the green colors with the green screen, it looks like it's see through. Interesting. Because the green is picking up the color of the green for the green screen. Ah, oh, interesting. <laughs> wow. Very interesting. But yeah. That's yeah. So that's what we got. It. That's what we got. And your Bowie is it's fantastic. Let's see the Bowie again. Let me see. Let me turn this thing. One more time. I'll we'll say good night. It's fantastic. Incredible. Wow. Look at that. Let me put this up. All in an hour and a half. That's incredible. What are the dimensions on that? This is 16 by 20. 16 by 20. Mm -hmm. So that's fairly large, right? Kind of, sort of. Yeah, I mean, from my hip to my shoulder. Yeah. Great. Let's see if we can get that in the screen. But uh, wow, I'm just over the moon about that. That's so amazing. I love it. I'm glad you like it. Look at them. <laughs> wow. All right, guys. Well, thank you again to our magnificent guests. It's been a lot of fun. Melanie Dirks, thank you so much. Um, thank you everybody for tuning in. These are going to be up maybe as early as tomorrow at electricmoon.org. We'll post them. Uh, the proceeds will go to Electric Moon Foundation, um, delivering the gift of music and art to kids that need it, who may not otherwise have received that opportunity. So we're going to make sure that they have that opportunity as we did. So uh, electricmoon.org, um, a lot of beautiful things coming up. The Center of Views celebrating the music of Radiohead. Uh, March 27th. Pretty excited about that. Another live painting. Um, our very first big Electric Moon Foundation fundraiser will be at Rock and Roll Pizza uh, in Simi Valley. We've got a bowling alley there. We're going to have a couple young kids bands open for, for my band. Uh, we're going to have artwork. Um, you'll be able to sponsor a lane um, and get a lane yourself. See a rock and roll show and bowl at the same time. It's a win-win situation, but uh, we'll be doing that May 14th. Uh, put that on your calendar, guys, and uh, we're going to sign off for the night. Once again, Melanie, what a blessing and what an honor, and uh, I love what you created, and uh, I'll never forget this, and thanks for being here. Thank you. All right, Melanie Dirks. Mike, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Thanks All right. Me. Good night from Electric Moon, guys. See you next time. Be good. Be kind. We need it. Create love. Bye-bye, guys. See you. Bye.